Hi, this is Musical Drewby, also known as Drew Witchman, the uh, programmer of the periodic table bingo caller and uh, card game. And I'm going to show you how to install it onto your computer and also use it in a group setting like a classroom. So when you download the file from Teachers Pay Teachers, you should have a zip file. Uh, the zip file, you just double click it or you can right click and select open and uh, you should have four files in there you should have periodic table bingo two per card periodic table bingo four per card the periodic table bingo caller installer and the readme file uh, what you want to do is select all of those put them on your desktop like so and then you want to come over to the readme file this has all the instructions um, on everything that I'm going to tell you how to do right now some information about the product and a way to contact me um, also it has the installer and that's what we're going to do next we're going to install the program so it says periodic table bingo caller installer you double click on it and then it comes up with the install program you click next make sure this is where on your hard drive you want to install it mine's being installed to the C drive in the folder program files x86 periodic table bingo caller that's the default place where it'll install it you click next again and you click start and it's finished and after it finishes you should have an icon on your desk that looks like this periodic bingo excuse me periodic table bingo caller now that's the program you're going to use to call out the cards for the bingo game uh, the random answers and with now what you want to do with this file that you just double clicked on just put it away somewhere where you'll save it so you know something happens to the program or you lose all your data on your hard drive on your hard drive just maybe a memory stick just put it somewhere I'm gonna put it right for now I'm gonna put it in this folder um, and I'll put my readme file in there too so I, so I know where it is matter of fact we can put this in there too for now um, the other files that you have here are uh, the periodic table bingo four per card and periodic table bingo two per card what that is the two per card basically has 50 uh, random randomly generated cards with a free spot in the middle uh, and there's two per card so that means there's going to be more space more real estate if you will um, but it also is going to require more printer ink because you do have to print these out on your own and uh, if you do print them out on a color printer or whatever printer make sure you laminate them so they will last a long time so that's two per card um, if you are concerned about you know conserving ink with your printer you might want to go with the four per card option it's smaller they're still the same fifty cards uh... randomly generated and uh... they're just on fewer pages and they're smaller it's a lot, a lot more cutting out things but uh, Whichever, whichever route you want to go to, you can use you can use beans on it. You can use whatever you want to. And the other one, you can use bingo chips, um, cut out squares, just whatever you guys have. So anyway, once you've got that, once you've cut those out and laminated those, you hand them out to your class. You don't have to hand out all fifty. You can let them pick out their own, however you want to do it. Um, and but here comes the part where I, I really I had a lot of fun programming this. This is the periodic table bingo caller. You double click on it and it comes up with this screen right here. Um, this is the periodic table bingo caller and basically the first thing you want to do is you want to pick the type of game you want to play. Classic rules is going to be just you know horizontal, vertical, or diagonal um, for a win. You can also choose blackout you can choose the beaker, it's like a chemistry beaker, um, diamond, kite, make a wish. It's not a birthday cake. My, 
<laughs> it looks like a well, the Make a Wish kind of whatever. This is a star and some land. All right, and this is positive and negative charge. A railroad, target, and treasure. So for now, I'm just going to choose the target one because it looks cool. And um, if you want the students to see the previous answers that you've called, you can leave this open, this box. Otherwise, you might want to go ahead and click hide so they can't see it. By default, it is open just so you know it's there. But you can close it just by pushing that button right there. Um, then when you're ready to get started, uh, you can go ahead and generate an answer. Or you can choose to only show part of the um, the element. Up here you have your atomic number, and here you have the atomic symbol, and here you have the common name for the element. So um, you can choose to hide part of that. Maybe in your game you just want to have the atomic symbol, or maybe you want to call out the atomic number and have them guess which atomic symbol it is. Or you can do the common name and have them guess which one it is. Or you know if your class is just getting into it you can have just two of them or you can have all three of them however you want to do it. So you keep generating answers every time uh, you call one you just generate one and call it out. It picks it at random from 118 elements and while it's doing that, it's also giving you a list of previously called answers. So uh, if somebody, let's say on the 20th call, somebody gets a bingo. Bingo! And you can say, well, okay, student, um, can you please tell me which ones you have? And they can tell you, and you can compare it to this list and uh, see if they actually do have a bingo. Um, and then you can keep going, blackout, whatever. Once you get to 118, I know this is kind of annoying. And at any time, you can hide any of these, and you can hide that again too. Well, it won't matter. Um, once you get to the 118th answer, the uh, generate answer button is disabled. It will not click anymore. So that's all 118 answers, and uh, you can go over those however you want to do it. When the game is over. You can press the R key. It says down here, press the R key to reset the game. You just reset it, and everything's back exactly the way it started. You can choose a new game type, however you want to do it. Um, show or hide different parts. You know, whatever, however you want to do it. Anyway, that's how to use the uh, periodic table bingo caller. So you basically use that in conjunction with the cards. In your classroom, you might want to use a projector, or um, you could even use it on your personal computer and the students can't see it. It could be just for you, it could be for the whole class. You could even use it in small groups. Maybe they break up into different groups or stations. Uh, they could use it with a small group. However you want to do it. Um, but anyway, that's how you use it. And I thank you very much for purchasing it from Teachers Pay Teachers, and I hope you get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Thanks a lot.